Hey gang, I recently did a shorts video that had four characteristic Jimi Hendrix chord voicings. Today what we're going to do is go more in depth into each of those, talk about their multiple uses, not only with Hendrix songs but with other songs and in some cases multiple ways of fingering them on the fretboard. So let's go. The first chord is of course the Hendrix chord. E7 sharp 9. Now, Hendrix did not invent this chord. He used it famously and made it the star of the show in Purple Haze, but others have used it before. Let's talk about some of the uses and the voicings themselves. Right, the E7 sharp 9. <laughs> really cool, this is the most common fingering and you can check that out in the chord diagram. But let's go over this one just a little more detail. We've got the open E, which names the chord, but also important is that we've got the E on the fifth string or on the A string seventh fret, right there, okay? Which makes it movable if we block out the thick E string. Really cool. One other thing that's interesting to note about the theory of this chord is that we've got the E, the G sharp, the D, and the G in this chord. So the G sharp is the major third of E, but the G is the minor third of E. So it gives it a really dissonant sort of sound, edgy chord. Now that's the most common fingering for this chord. However, there is another fingering that's very useful. Let me show it to you. The other fingering that's really useful is this one right here. Now, there's a number of different ways to do this, but if you check out the chord diagram, this spells out the chord. We've got an E, G sharp, D, and G. And both of these chords are very useful. All right, let's talk about some of the other uses of this chord. Now, Hendrix definitely had a cool use of the E7 sharp nine, but he didn't invent it. He's not the first one to use it, and you can use it in a number of different places. I'm gonna show you a few, and I think you'll find it very useful. So probably the most obvious and most used is in the minor blues as the five chord substitution. So let's check it out. In a minor blues, we've got, oh, we'll play it in A, right? The one chord would be an A minor, four chord would be a D minor, five chord would be an E minor, and that's it. There's only three chords in the blues. Makes it easy. So instead of playing that E minor, you can play that E7 sharp nine. Check it out. Now, why does it work? Now, one of the reasons why it works is that this G, which is prominently featured in that E7 sharp nine, takes a starring role in the A minor scale or A minor pentatonic. It's the flatted seventh of A minor. So we really emphasize that note and give a lot of tension at the same time. Cool. Now another common use of the seven sharp nine chord is in funk. You can hear it done a lot. Now I'm gonna use the second fingering that we learned and I'm gonna bring it up to here. Check this out, I'm sure you'll recognize. This next one, Pure Hendrix. Okay, let's check out the fingering on this one now. Okay, well here is the fingering on it. 
can check out the chord diagram as well. And yes, it does have the famous or infamous, however you think about it, thumb wrap. Now, if you're not a thumb wrap player, if that hurts, or if you've got arthritis or something like that, you can get the sound. Don't let people tell you you can't play Hendrix. You can still play this. Just gotta play the top four strings. And yeah, you don't get that booming bass, but you do get, you still get the characteristics of that sound and it's still a cool chord. So that's fine. One other fingering I wanna show you is that you can lift up, if you're adept at this, you can lift up and black out the third string as well, like this. And that makes it a true, a true suspended chord. Now, one of the things I really like about this is that you can use a trick that, I'm not sure where I learned it, maybe it was Robin Ford, but you can use a trick on minor pentatonics and it's what Hendrix did when he did this. And here's basically the way that I think about it anyway. I can take, I'm playing a G, and if I think about the top string on a minor pentatonic scale, I can use any of those notes as kind of the basis and play the chords of that. Now, the more ambiguous the chord is, like if you have a suspended chord, the better it works. Isn't that cool? But it also works for chords like this. It's just a great little thing to do. Our next voicing is probably the most useful of all of these. It's the E with the G sharp in the bass. Of course, that's just a triad with the third in the bass or a first inversion triad. Used by all sorts of people from Motown to modern players like John Mayer and even Brad Paisley. But what Hendrix did to it was quite different. He played it in a different manner. All right, let's check out the fingering of that chord. Okay, here is the basic fingering. And of course, Hendrix played it with a hammer on, which makes it really cool sounding. And you'll recognize that sound from the Wind Cries Mary, of course. Probably his most famous one. But what's cool about it is that it allows you to play all sorts of hammer-ons that are really fun. You know, that sort of thing. Another way to think about it is it's just this root right here, this bar chord, which I'm sure most of you are familiar with. And we're taking the root and we're moving it up to the, the third of the chord to play it like this. All right, our last chord, probably the prettiest of the bunch. All right, let's check out how it's fingered now. All right, this one's a bit of a stretch. But if you're playing in the key of E or B or A, you can take off that pinky. also still sounds good. Now I do happen to think it works a little bit better with the pinky on. But you can get away with it without it. Now isn't it cool, the way that Hendrix played Angel, for example, is that he played the open E on the bottom and the top, making it just sound like more floaty. And he's using that same trick of moving up. In along the pentatonic scale. Why can he do that? Well, because this chord is an ambiguous chord as well. It doesn't have the third in it, which is pretty interesting. All right. I hope you enjoy this one. I love that, that song and that voicing. All right, well, there you have it. 
for beautiful, cool sounding, and really downright useful Hendrix voicings. You know, when I was young and pretty stupid, I may have even uttered the phrase, Hendrix sucks once in my life but I was quickly corrected when I heard his chordal style, especially in like Castles Made of Sand, Little Wing, I was just totally blown away. And these are just four great voicings. However you play them, if you can't do the thumb rap, don't worry about it. Play them without the thumb rap and they still sound great and just enjoy the heck out of them. All right, until next time, we'll see you on down the road.